again at home delivery of Ars Electronica Linz. Uh, we are here at another series from um, Zuhause mit, uh, at home with. Um, we're here in the pub lab, sitting uh, directly at Ars Electronica Center. <laughs> and I'm very happy to introduce to you Emiko Ogawa, my guest uh, of today's uh, Zuhause mit. Uh, very warm welcome, Thank Amy. you very much, Manuela, for these opportunities. <laughs> Thank you that you actually accepted it. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, Emiko, we, are, uh, we have been colleagues for a very <laughs> long time. Yeah. And uh, we just saw a work mm -hmm. uh, that you did, mm -hmm. that you illustrated, mm -hmm. that you worked on uh, in the last years. Mm -hmm. Can you let us know what we have seen? Uh, about the Stoli River. So oh. this is the project 2014-15. Um, together with our um, friend, but the great artist, Maki Namekawa, the pianist, and the Chiaki Ishikawa, who is the composer, that we collaborate together to create the one project for the deep space. The topic, the Stoli River, is the collaboration with the MIDI piano, that's so the visual, uh, the combination with the actual um, active visualization and also the combination of the post um, imaging. And the topic is the Japanese old storytelling, which all Japanese know that, um, that we wanted to weave the, sto re weave the story for the kids also and also the people in Austria who don't know this story. Which so story weaver, like really yeah. weaving in the story mm -hmm. and uh, using, uh, you were using deep space yeah. um, as a setting mm -hmm. and Maki Namekawa, you mentioned it, yes. was playing and uh, so this, I can remember actually, it was <laughs> a very, very special setting. Mm -hmm. Amy, you are an artist, uh, you are an illustrator, mm -hmm. you are a researcher, you are a project director here at Ars Electronica. Mm -hmm. um, and you are doing so many things and even when we had, um, I mean, we know each other since quite already a very <laughs> long time and when we sat together just recently and were like doing a recap mm -hmm. uh, of your time even before uh, staying in Linz, yeah. um, you even started, uh, uh, or no, you, you not even started it, you finished it. I mean, mm -hmm. your studies have been about cognitive psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is actually how you started in Tokyo after high school. Yeah. Uh, Amy, what is cognitive psychology? Yeah, well, uh, first of all, my personal interest is the human being itself. Of course, we know that um, we all human beings are all different, but some points that we have some similarity that we tend to think like this because of human beings. We tend to recognize it because of the brain system of the human being. I'm very curious about this kind of the small, but a lot of things which normally we don't know, even we are the human beings. There's a lot of things that we, um, we don't know about this tendency. So then also that we really, the human being get a lot of influence by a lot of environment as well. So that was my interest in where we started to study about it, um, not the individual psychological situation, but uh, uh, about the human being itself. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I mean, your time in Tokyo, yeah, mm -hmm. when you studied this, uh, and your focus on humans, on mental processes that mm -hmm. are taking place, on the way how people think, mm -hmm. how humans are mm -hmm. or are behaving, mm -hmm. and then you were studying this. Um, but actually what I found also so interesting is that you then worked as a systems engineer <laughs> and as a web analyst. So yeah. uh, can, can you tell us more how also this is uh, coming together? Because I think, mm -hmm. I mean, I also want to explain it because I think it's so important mm -hmm. um, to tell our audiences mm -hmm. also that, for example, if you're working as an artist, mm -hmm. you can do so many other things. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, uh, It's just important just to, to, to do your experiences, mm -hmm. even though it seems like it's totally foreign fields. 
which often isn't the case. So how was it in your case? Yeah, so um, in my case, uh, I was interested in for the, um, in the research situation, more like the how human being get the effect from the environment unconsciously, how this be, um, changed the human's behavior. That was my first topic. It also looks like um, the same element of um, ethnography or something like this. It's uh, about the observation and also the statistics is very important that um, so that we can see um, in more scientific way as well. Mm -hmm. And in this point of view, first of all, I dive into the system engineer uh, world because mm -hmm. then it's more or less these numbers and statistics and logical thinking is very important. Mm -hmm. And I worked in, in four years, but the world uh, working, I'm working as the system engineer was more working in the very old um, system which is more like a um, bank system or something mm -hmm. so that i wanted to work and um, it was very nice experience and also i realized that not only making the system but also how to tell this system to people it's super important even to the programmers even to the people so that i wanted to shift to more website which is more interface um information info interface so it's about the information and the statistics and how to tell um, based on the human's recognition and also the human's behavior we um, tend to have. So I changed the job after four years to more web analytics, um, more like um, usability design and also the analysis for the this usability interface. And then in the meantime, I was also working together with my partner Hide uh, to work about the so-called media art and the interactive art project. My interest and in working together, my interest was more the how people can intuitively interact with the artwork. Mm -hmm. And his interest is how he can make the, this message or vision to the artwork. So, that was the really coincident and the natural things that we work together. Mm -hmm. So this uh, intuition or this intuitively mm -hmm. going into um, or giving giving others a chance mm -hmm. into going into some information. Yeah. I think this is really something that is very characteristic also of your work. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, also like visualizing information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is also what you do in web statistics. It's yep. more a statistical, uh, mm -hmm. statistical approach, yep. but what you are doing with your personal approach and with your illustrations mm -hmm. and you work as an artist. And when I see your illustrations mm -hmm. um, and I mean, we can have a look now at your illustrations. We have <laughs> it even here in the back. Yeah. Yep. Marusan mm -hmm. is a very important icon or mascot, you know, mascot for the Ars Electronica Center. Mm -hmm. Um, how did you actually come to Marusan? Well, um, it was not intended to, uh, to make as a character, but it was um, spontaneously born, so, uh, born, so to speak, uh, that we wanted to, uh, when uh, I use it, when we want to describe about, about our artworks. As I mentioned, so our artworks was at that moment a very interactive art, so to speak. And to make some um, description, how to, how to react, how to touch, what kind of reaction happens. Um, and it's super easy that once I draw one icon or human being shape, then people immediately understand, ah, here's the interaction, how to use like this. And this expression already shows that, ah, ah effect coming so that I need not to write hey here you first you touch second it happens here and third you see that it is a sore uh, all and um, without this kind of the description even only one drawing with one um, human being and some artwork mm -hmm. I can already describe what what is the meaning or how to um, interact with the artwork and that's the reason I wanted to start to draw mm -hmm. the um, human being things and I call it 
so um, that maru san, maru san, maru san, so maru means that in Japanese, like circle, mm -hmm. means nothing. So it doesn't mention about nobody. Mm -hmm. So it's it means op empty. And mm -hmm. san is as as some maybe, um, people know that it's just a uh, respect format like. Mm -hmm. We can call it Manu san or Manuela san, mm -hmm. which is just a very charming and uh, friendly way, and also the respective way to say, um, to tell your name, mm -hmm. like not like Mr. and Mrs. Mm -hmm. So I started to call it Maru san. So it's, it's anonymous that it can be you, it can be somebody, mm -hmm. but as a, a rep representative of human being that how you can react with the artwork or what kind of experience you have in this situation. That's the starting point that I um, start to draw for the description of our artwork. In 2007, we came um, that together with Hide, I came to Asok Tonika and Linz um, as a, first of all, just an artist in residence for one year. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, uh, Gerrit Stoker, our artistic director, just saw um, my drawing and conceived the idea, ah, oh, maybe this is also very intuitive and good for the new Asoktonika Center. But may I interrupt <laughs> you, Amy? Because I think we even have prepared a mm -hmm. photo, uh, an image of mm -hmm. the first generation of Maru ah, yeah. san mm -hmm. So maybe we can have a, a look into, this is the part of the, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, part of the instruction that yeah. you just mentioned about the artwork, right? Yeah. Uh, and you and uh, we can see um, Maru San, which is a very nice name, f a very respectful and polite mm -hmm. name for a placeholder, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, we can see here uh, also Maru San, uh, for example, uh, down in the image uh, who wants to uh, uh, connect with or is going into the direction of the cube. Yeah. Right. So this is the project called Cube 2003. Mm -hmm. And um, it consists of three parts, and that each part that it's more easier to uh, each part the scale is different. Mm -hmm. So the human being icon is very also um, effective. How to touch? What kind of thing that people could see? Mm -hmm. And like in the left side, the one person is taking some cup, which means that it can be also effective cafe. So all information I can just put into one drawing. And the next generation uh, at Ars Electronica Center mm -hmm. is also what we prepared as images. Uh, so we will see how you modified Marosan. Look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, for example, for year, so even the people who don't know this English or German, still people can um, imagine that it should be the information center and some one person should be available for me. So this is the one example. And maybe on the next images that you see, um, like mm -hmm. the Neue Spielda from mentioned. So even people don't understand German, mm -hmm. maybe people can imagine, okay, something robotics, something um, more um, physical experience, something more genetic. So, these are the messages um, which I understand that, um, that we want to deliver this information. So that was all my understanding how we want to, um, I want to introduce the Softonica Center. So maybe um, like this deep space is that you cannot fly at all actually. Mm -hmm. But this is my image of the experience that kind of wow. <laughs> I wanted to describe, and I still I like one of my favorite icon of mm -hmm. the Asoktonika Center in deep space. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that it. I mean, it's on the one hand like visualizing information for others, mm -hmm. but uh, this is not the, the last image uh, that we also see here. Like, okay, uh, sorry. Uh, we are actually closed, so it's out of order and yeah. or it's not even working. So it's like, oh, what's happening here? I think it's very clear yeah, <laughs> what so people can expect. Mm -hmm. And uh, even uh, I think they can even feel with the person that yeah. is uh, telling it. 
<laughs> with my rosa. Yeah. Very nice, Amy. And you were mentioning also that you are, I mean, when you are drawing, mm -hmm. and drawing is something that is super important for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever you are, uh, so knowing and drawing has a big relationship, mm -hmm. actually. Can, yeah. can you maybe tell us more about it? Well, uh, um, to me, drawing is my language. So um, not only uh, to write some letters, but drawing is that describe what I understand and how I understand. And I, yeah, um, thank you for this interview case. And I remember that also the, um, I have a tendency that since I was teenagers, um, I tend to draw the drawing in my notebooks and also especially that daily notes that to how to so how to store or keep my memory I, so, I would like to bring it also in now uh, because I think <laughs> we have to we have to have a look on, on the sketches uh, like uh, this is a, a typically normal it's not even a very special sketch well, it's a it's a sketch out of the life <laughs> yeah. even with traces from Moe your <laughs> daughter right <laughs> it's really one of the example of my um, schedule note um, and also there's some drawing from my daughter as well, <laughs> combination. But um, to me, uh, um, drawing, it's not for thinking or scrubbing, but uh, to me, more outcome. That after my thinking or understanding, I want to draw. And because I want to keep my understanding in very intuitive way. And to me, it's the same meaning in the, um, also the weight I have as a, another language as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's on the one hand uh, thinking about memories mm -hmm. because you mentioned the diary mm -hmm. and you are keeping the memories via drawings, mm -hmm. but you're also thinking via drawing or yeah. is it? Uh... Um, it's both, but the, to me, uh, my, what I really want to draw is more um, keep my understanding. Mm -hmm. So in this point of view, it's completely the same as, how can I say, um, of course, while I'm I'm thinking I draw it, but this is also my current understanding. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, I um, so always, um, of course, I think it's, it completely depends on the person, but to me, um, drawing is how I understand and how I want, I, I perceive the information. So mm -hmm. it's very, I, I know it's very personal mm -hmm. and very subjective view. But this is the thing I understand mm -hmm. and I want to share with you. So this is on um, the position of, to me, that drawing. Mm -hmm. So drawing is then actually more understanding mm -hmm. uh, situations. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, uh, for example, if we come now to one of the very important um, uh, theories, mm -hmm. also here at Ars Electronica, is, uh, I mean, design thinking mm -hmm. is existing, mm -hmm. but as Electronica uh, and also you and also together with Hida, I mean, mm -hmm. art thinking mm -hmm. is uh, something where we all elaborated actually a lot on it. So what does it actually uh, mm -hmm. mean and, and, and how is it actually contributing to our own practice? Mm -hmm. uh, can, you, can you tell us more? What do you very personally mm -hmm. think what art thinking is? Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, and also as you know, that uh, my background is not art; it's not coming first. That my, my interest was from, from um, more interest of the human being itself, and so then I meet with art, mm -hmm. and it really I was so how can I say um, astonished about the power of art that. Um, first of all, throughout the make the project together with Hide and my colleagues and our, our lot of collaborators, I was always inspired with the power of art. And then afterwards, more than it, that when I come to Linz and work in Asoktonika, I was more and more surprised and completely into the power of art. And that's the thing I really wanted to share with people that how the art 
has the power to let people think and to think about the human being itself. So that's the reason I'm still really fascinated to work in Asoktonika and also love my work to um, organize and have a network of pre Asoktonika itself. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. We, if we come now to your position mm -hmm. within Ars Electronica, mm -hmm. I mean, you are the head uh, of pre Ars Electronica. Mm -hmm. uh, you are directing uh, pre Ars Electronica, I think, since uh, 2013. 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's um, uh, so you have a, a huge experience. Uh, working on the, I mean, you yourself, mm -hmm. you are artist, uh, you are, do you have the understanding uh, how artists feel when they submit, mm -hmm. when they uh, actually contribute uh, their, their work, their mm -hmm. knowledge, their, the, 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 their world, mm -hmm. their artistic practice, mm -hmm. uh, when they speak about this uh, within Ars Electronica and within mm -hmm. the pre-Ars Electronica. Mm -hmm. And what, what I find also very interesting, how you are reflecting on this, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, because you are, um, I think this is also why you are not only organizing it so that enough people are contributing to the pre Ars Electronica mm -hmm. or that they can get or hold the Golden Nike then at the stage, whatever. So you are um, um, this, in these discussions when you, for example, present pre Ars Electronica mm -hmm. and when you present also the development of pre Ars Electronica, I mm -hmm. like always very much how you frame and how you contextualize the works that are actually then on display or that has been selected. Um, uh, how, uh, I mean, you as yourself, you are an artist, so what are the challenges for you in like working as a director of Free Ars Electronica, uh, but maybe also the possibilities and the, the chances that you see and also maybe the, the, the context that is opening mm -hmm. uh, up for you, uh, the world of, of so many topics and mm -hmm. themes that are all coming together. Yeah. Well, um, as you may know, the Pia Soktonika is the competition with the several categories and um, happening every year so that every year different artists submit it and we get inspired with their um, way how to describe the society and what kind of technology they are use, using or what kind of um, situation that they warn um, us or let people think mm -hmm. like this art thinking, one of that thinking way. And, and I, what I really love and, and it's really take care is that how we can really share this excitement and also the topic that we can share with people during the festival and also how we can make the opportunities for the artists that they get the inspiration, for example, during the Asoktonika festival throughout some uh, opportunities to meet people or some framework setting to um, get another inspirations or invite the artist in another um, context for the different for in the different inspiration for them so always try to make this circulation because that this is also again my understanding of art thinking that it's, it's not like just get inspiration and think like this, mm -hmm. but to me, the art thinking, the most important thing is this circulation. It should be really... Now the, ah, image yeah, thank also. you. Maybe you can explain Well, it. <laughs> still it's a scrubbing and my understanding of art, art thinking. It's not the way of the think like number one, two, three, but the most important thing is the circulation that and, uh, to create the, your ecosystem to make more your thinking way more and more clearly. And, and the important thing is that, of course, to get the inspiration mm -hmm. is the first step maybe, but then you can think about, um, and, and a lot of artwork let you think about many topics, like the, um, this year we saw a lot of projects that AI related project, mm -hmm. which uh, it's very useful for the human being and sometimes it's very convenient for the human being, but we should know about what kind of the thing that we show, uh, we, we provide the information to the AI. Is it really, for example, um, yeah, is it really necessary for the human being or um, so to normally when we are in the convenient situation, we, uh, the human brain 
tend to switch off to think, just react. Do, 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 do. But always the artist's work make people to think, to stop and think, which is super important. And then also the more that second important thing is then we should make some prototyping, whatever. So it may be the prototyping, the real one, or for some people, to me, maybe drawing. And for the, some people, it may be just um, um, describing what you think. But then afterwards, the dialogue is super important, not to show like this. But I think the artists really want to talk each other and exchange each other the opinion. And then the other people get the inspiration again. So it, this circulation is super important. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, during the time, mm -hmm. uh, since you are actually, actually the head of the pre ars Electronica, mm -hmm. Um, there is also, I mean, there's not only the different categories mm -hmm. like interactive art, sound art, hybrid art, mm -hmm. digital communities, mm -hmm. animation, uh, what did I forget, uh, U19, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure I forgot something, mm -hmm. but <laughs> there's a lot of um, uh, different categories mm -hmm. that we have. Um, and you already mentioned it for you, it's very important also to, to give uh, the artist a chance to meet, uh, mm -hmm. not only via the, the presentation mm -hmm. during the festival mm -hmm. which is then also very important so whoever mm -hmm. submits to the pre as electronica mm -hmm. um, has a chance if virtually or in person at least to uh, be connected mm -hmm. to the network of as electronica to mm -hmm. exchange to um, uh, to to share mm -hmm. things um, but also during this time uh, we developed for example the Ars Electronic Animation Festival mm -hmm. so there is a uh, more platforms even mm -hmm. that not only belong to the time of the festival or that not only belong to the pre uh, to the to the time of the Shui meeting mm -hmm. or then the presentation so um, this way is of uh, sharing mm -hmm. and communicating mm -hmm. is something that is extremely important for you mm -hmm. when it comes to the Prias Electronica. Yeah, exactly. Because that, that I believe that this is the reason for the artist who really want to submit the Prias Electronica to, of course, to be recognized as an, an award, but also that to get the opportunity to get the inspiration from their side as well. And this is also for all people that who want to um, get the inspiration as well to see what is the most important thing that human beings should think. Mm -hmm. So to me, it, it's completely into my interest as well that <laughs> as you know that I'm super interested in about this human being itself. Why we tend to think like this? What is the... Uh, and the technology and society is uh, drastically changing the situation every year. So it's not just a um, normal circulation, but every year it's drastically changing a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm really super keen to And another see it. thing that is really outstanding is um, the contribution by female artists, mm -hmm. right? Exactly, exactly. And for example, last year we started the artificial, the new category called the artificial intelligence and life art category. And I realized that in this field, there's a lot of female submitters in, in compare with the other categories. So as I mentioned, the statistic is to me very important element so that in the beginning of the jury meeting, which is normally happens in um, mid of April, um, normally, we invite all jury members to Linz to discuss because mm -hmm. it should not be just online voting or something. I like it or something, but more discussion is very important mm -hmm. because this is also another um, element that jury members should get inspired with the other people with this open dialogue. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, this year, 2020, we could not make this um, meeting on uh, the physically but online because of the COVID situation. But we really try to settle the proper way that how we can make the environment to let them discuss a lot. And normally that and, and what I wanted to mention was that in the we call it Thursday evening, we have the reception um, night 
with all jury members to introduce all jury members. We did it this year via online though. And in this um, introduction, always I show the statistics of the submitters. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and you prepared it also for yeah. us here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so because it's important um, thing, this is just a fact, but I think it's important for the jury member to, to know and see and for example, this is the example what, which I showed to the jury members 2020. I just added the 2020 winners after the jury meeting for today. But what you see is the submitters since 1987 and the jury members and the, the bottom is the Golden Nika winners, female and male artist and group. And if you see the, um, the left one, upper one, uh, the submitters are still a lot of male artists and the female artists are this year only still 30% and half of them are the still male artists. So the numbers of submitters are still female artists are less, but of course when we compare with these five years, it's getting more and more, so it's increasing. This is the already, of course, the tendency, but the, the, the first portion, the pies are different actually. So that's the inf one, first information. And only the Asoktonika's organization side um, can, some, only <laughs> we can do something is the amount ratio of the jury members, female and male. Mm -hmm. So that um, after 2013 and in the beginning, you see the yellow is the male um, jury members. So we, we try to invite the female jury members and since this 2016, we really try to keep that more than half are female jury members because the winners are selected by jury members and Asoktonika doesn't, um, cannot select them. So, um, and then selected jury members, we address this information, the Golden Nika winners since 1987, um, Categorize that every 10 years, it, these are the pies. In the dark blue are the female single artist, and the green part um, is the single male artist, and the others are group. And this year is the very special year. As you see the um, right one, we have three single female artists and two groups. And also the statistic wise this year, finally, um, if we compare with the, the several decades, um, every five years actually, um, you see the blue part, it's more than green part, means the female artists, um, Godenika artists are more than male artists. And this is, this is the first year ever of this Piasoktonika's um, history that I wanted to share with you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really great. I mean, also especially because we are, um, are talking a lot about this issue mm -hmm. uh, in uh, like being here in Central Europe, yeah. but you also told me a lot of stories about Japan and how the situation uh, developed also for mm -hmm. women. Um, it was very interesting also that you mentioned uh, it's not so, m so much about uh, this kind of professionality or in, in like in a working cycle, there's a lot of women uh, uh, having wonderful positions, but as soon as they are marrying or as soon as they want to have a family, it's changing drastically, right? Yeah. It's still, I think, unfortunately, the, this is the current situation in Japan. And you may know the global ranking of the um, female activation. I forgot the, <laughs> the exact name, but the, Japan is like one of the worst countries that um, female people are not in. At the, there are so less amount of the politicians, female politicians, female leaders, um, if we compare with the the other countries. It's like 146 or something like this mm -hmm. in whole countries, in whole countries. Can you mm -hmm. imagine? Mm -hmm. It's super um, pity situation, mm -hmm. but I know that there's a lot of um, very 
flexible and uh, how, how, how can I call it? that a lot of female artists in, in Japan and as well as that um, also in the companies that female people we are really drastically changing and try to change in, mm -hmm. but still it's on the way mm -hmm. and still it's not in the politics, but uh, I really feel that it's starting, it's very late, mm -hmm. but yeah, but it's, I think it's also, I mean, yeah. here in Austria, I'd say, it's, it's on its way. Yeah? Yeah. We, we still have a long way to go. And then it's maybe because of, for example, if we, I see Tokyo because, yeah, well, before I live in Linz, I was living in Tokyo, and it's a big city. And commuting is very normal. I spent like 40 minutes commuting every day, just go there. Uh, go to the workspace and just go back to home. Mm -hmm. And this is completely, 40 minutes is completely normal. Mm -hmm. And like 30 minutes is in the train like this. <laughs> really, literally like this. I, I cannot stand even like this, but like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, to, first of all, to me it was normal so that you can imagine that uh, the society in Japan was not so kind for um, young mothers, uh, well, even not young, but the Inuit mothers and um, children. And for example, still in the Japanese train, the, there's only the first car and the last car. There's a, one space of the baby car, and that's it. Mm -hmm. So it's still so hard to even try and use the transport, public transportation for um, mothers and fathers with a kid, the small babies, mm -hmm. which have to be really changed. The, mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, if I really compare with the European cities mm -hmm. like this, I was astonished that the, the tram, the Strassenbahn, the tram, it's really um, designed completely the baby car first and also the wheelchair first, mm -hmm. because they are there and they need to use the tr public transportation, of course. And this should be also the same for the Japanese situation, but it was not unfortunately reflected in the proper way in my mm -hmm. feeling. You have, uh, I mean, it was in Austria mm -hmm. that you, that Moe mm -hmm. actually, um, uh, that, that you gave birth to Moe. Mm -hmm. Moe is now four years old. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so Hideaki mm -hmm. has a wonderful f position at Ars Electronica. You have a wonderful position at Ars Electronica. Uh, you're both also working as artists mm -hmm. um, and uh, you actually uh, created a family and uh, you were together the three. So um, I also would like to uh, ask you, because you once mentioned that you love Sundays in Austria. <laughs> so, <laughs> why do you love Sundays in Austria? Well, um, as I mentioned, I was working, uh, before we come to Linz, we are working in Tokyo. And of course, Sunday is working day. And... Um, of course, for you, of course. Well. <laughs> I think not so for so yeah. many Austrians, yeah, but for that, you, that's of course. True. So <laughs> to me, that it was very normal situation on Sunday. All the shopping malls are opening and uh, all amusement things are opening. So this was the completely normal situation at that moment. And, but at, and when I look back to these Tokyo days, I worked a lot during the weekdays and also spent some time and money a lot also weekend and still um, exhausting because of um, this consum consuming and also that the long time commuting time which I felt at that moment very normal mm -hmm. but when I after come to Linz I realized that okay Sunday nothing to do okay what I can do but I realized that it's so nice that officially I can make it switch off and make my time for more, um, like we decided to, to, to concentrate on for more at our artwork um, besides the working times. So it's super, to me, it's super important that Sunday is more calm day and more um, 
allocate to more working day personally, internally, um, to develop our thinking or the prototyping more. And I think the, for human being, this kind of the calm time or calm day is really needed, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and maybe that's the reason it was invented <laughs> initially. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, there was also some kind of religious yes. thing in the back. <laughs> yeah, of course. If we speak about course. humans and, and, and uh, some kind of uh, mm -hmm. human intention. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, this brings me directly to the last question mm -hmm. also. Amy, what does home need for you? Oh. What does to house mean for you? Yeah, um, true. To me, I think the home is the place but yeah like sunday that um i can be myself relaxing and so it doesn't matter the which kind of home i'm there but to feel okay this is my space and i can spend some time this feeling itself is home <laughs> and of course that the um the families are super important but um to feel at home means like to really have this calm time for me mm -hmm. because recently more and more time is very tend to be very busy a lot of information is around us we really need to have some time and space to center, um, yeah, focus on the calm time and uh, think slowly and calmly and make the prototyping. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Amy. That Thank you, you very that much, Mommy. <laughs> so, Amy Kosan, <laughs> to, to make it really correct. So, thank you very much that you actually participated and thank you, you very gave much. us an introduction what into is. your world, into your artistic world, into your thoughts, into the way how you are uh, sharing and via visualizing your mm -hmm. thoughts also to others and uh, mm -hmm. and that you bring in others and that you collaborate with uh, so many uh, also other artists and that you uh, direct uh, I direct. have something I remember <laughs> that you when you say <laughs> Eriko san <laughs> so I want to give some oh. present to you that about the Marusan maybe that for uh, our souvenir is, collection. Yes, understanding of like <laughs> curiosity. <laughs> ah, this is very nice. This is very nice. Uh, assigned, assigned Marusan from Emiko San. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you also. very much. Thank you very much also for you that you joined us again uh, at. Um, to house a mid at home with. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, um, yes, a lot of uh, interviews, a lot of uh, situations that already took place here in the pub lab. Um, we are very happy if you like us, if you subscribe to uh, the YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, and I hope that you join us for the next sessions um, and hope to see you soon again, or maybe even to see you in person at the Ars Electronica Center. Ciao, ciao.